Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Reeti and I am back with another lecture in the DBMS series. So in the last lecture we learned about normalization. In this particular video we would be learning about denormalization. So without any further ado, let's get started. So what is this denormalization? This is the opposite of normalization. So whatever things we do in normalization, we just do the opposite in denormalization. It involves intentionally introducing some redundancy into a well-normalized database schema to improve query performance. Now in normalization, what we used to do is we used to reduce the data redundancy which is present in our table. Consider that there is a table of employee which is having employee ID, employee name, employee age as well as this department details such as employee department name, department ID, department salary. Now in this particular table, we used to encounter some data redundancy or duplicacy because of rows as well as column. So row level duplicacy was make sure introducing the concept of primary key. We used to make an attribute such as ID as primary key and now there couldn't be any null or duplicate values which is present in our ID column. So row level duplicacy was reduced. Now for column level duplicacy, we encountered that there were some columns which are having the same details like the department manager and salary whenever there is an IT department and whenever there is an HR department, it used to remain same for the set of employees who are having the same department. Now for that, what we used to do is we used to normalize the table and we used to break the table into two sub tables or more tables so that we can reduce the column level duplicacy which we were encountering. But in denormalization, what it says is we intentionally introduce some redundancy into a well normalized database schema to improve the query performance. Now in normalization, we used to break the tables into sub tables, two or more tables. So this was the earlier table which was present. Now there are sub tables to reduce the data redundancy. Now this is an employee table. This is the department table and this is the salary table. Consider I want the detail of a employee who is having ID as 2 and I want the details of its department as well as its salary. So I want all the employee details, I want all the department details, I want all the salary details for an employee who is having ID as 2. Now for that I have to make query into this particular table, this particular table and this table as well. And as the table increase, the queries also increase. Now we have to make different type of joins to get some data from the department as well as salary table. So because of that, our query is not very much optimized or it takes a lot of time to fetch from each and every table because there could be a possibility that the data is present at the very last of department table, the data is present at the very first of salary table and because of that we encounter some issues like the query is taking a lot of time. Now the query if it's being used in an API, the API is taking a lot of time, our SLAs increase. So because of that we can encounter them some time issues, some speed issues and much more things. So because of that we introduce the concept of denormalization that we are intentionally introducing redundancy but if all the data is present into the same table the query time would be very less. So consider if you wish to find the salary of Rahul. So to find the salary of Rahul, first we need to find the department of Rahul. So first we have to make the query into the employee table to find the department. And once we get the department of Rahul that is IT, then again we have to make a query in this department table to fetch the salary of Rahul. So you can see that we are making multiple queries. So multiple queries can increase the time, can reduce the speed and our API can take a lot of time to provide us the result. So what are the benefits of denormalization? First one is faster queries. So it can reduce the need for complex joins between tables during queries, which can eventually improve the speed of retrieving the data and it can give the data very fast. Now the second benefit is the queries would be simpler because there are no joins which are being involved. There are no three or four tables in which we are making queries. So the queries would be very less complex. It can simplify the queries by allowing them to be executed on a single table instead of requiring joins across multiple tables. So in normalization, we used to break a single table into multiple tables. Now we need to make queries into these tables. So because of making queries into different tables, the time also increases and the queries also get complex. In denormalization, we used to combine all the tables into a single table. Even if we know that the data redundancy can occur, but still 
still we are combining it into a single table and because we are combining it into a single table the time always reduces and the queries are also simple so there are not complex queries now with advantages there are always disadvantages so let's see the disadvantages so first disadvantage is increase data redundancy as i told that we introduce the concept of normalization to decrease the data redundancy but since in denormalization we are again combining all the table into a single table which is we are breaking the normalized table into a denormalized table so we can say that the data redundancy has increased now the second is less data consistency because if we are combining everything in a single table consider that if i need to update the salary of a person who is working in it department and if somehow i miss to update for any of the employee the salary would be different for both employees who are working in it department so that would be a data inconsistency now the third is denormalization can make the database schema less flexible for future changes like adding modifying new data elements so we learned about the insertion updation and deletion anomalies so that can occur because of denormalization we can't go ahead and add any of the data of any of the new employee who has joined the company because right now i don't know the department manager and salary details of that particular employee or consider that there is a new department supply chain which is introduced in our company for now there are no employees who are present in supply chain and since id is a primary key we can't make it as null and we need to insert a data but right now we don't have any data so these type of issues can happen whenever we denormalize the table but the only advantage is it makes the queries faster and it simplifies the query so this was all about denormalization in this particular video i hope you like this video so if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button if you are someone who is new to my channel can go ahead and watch out the tech content first and if you find it useful for yourself you can go ahead and subscribe till then take care keep learning keep growing keep smiling bye all